What are you looking at? A meme of a cat saying, chill, bro. We should probably get to that parenting tip. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about how to make real connections in an online world in this month's parenting tip. Think about this statement. Things might be normal. There's a common thread going around about waiting until things get back to normal. But what if there are many aspects of our culture now that aren't going back? This isn't an argument to say all things are better today or all things were better back in the day, but it's a perspective of our current reality that we need to consider. For example, if our world will never be less online than it is today, how should that impact the way we parent our kids? If social media or virtual connection points aren't going away, how do we help kids to navigate that world and understand their own relationships? Yeah, I think the first is to introduce them to your friends. You have friends that you stay connected with online and that's a great use of social media, but it can also be a great teaching opportunity. Mm. You can introduce your family to the friends that you interact with online and explain how you met them and share stories that you remember. Make sure that they understand that this is a real person and that your relationship with them matters. Two, encourage and model kindness. An online world can empower people to be bolder and meaner online than they would be in person. Break that trend by being purposefully kind and loving to your neighbors, even your virtual neighbors. Leave kind comments, share photos of the people you love, and promote local businesses intentionally while encouraging kids to do the same online and when they're physically present. Yeah, third thing is this, talk about safety. And there's dating apps, friend finding apps, social media platforms, they all provide opportunities for real connections, but it can also lead to unwanted attention. And these things are here to stay, and so while creating restrictions is great, talk openly about the dangers of online connections so that teenagers can come to you if they feel unsafe. Four, model accountability. There are all sorts of boundaries in place for potentially dangerous places for minors. There are ratings on movies, there are age limits for bars, age limits for driving your car. Yet when it comes to a space where our children could potentially be exposed to incredibly dangerous things, anyone can read or write and access pretty much whatever they want. Statistically speaking, adults struggle with this a lot as well. So we want to make sure that we are teaching our kids how to be accountable to the content they access online. A great way to do this is to subscribe to a filtering or monitoring service like Covenant Eyes. Have it not only on your children or teens devices, but also on your own. Show them that you need protection just as much as they do, because you do. Yeah, and number five is unplug. The internet isn't going away, but we can walk away from it when we need to. And you can tell your kids to limit their screen time, but this works so much better when you model it. So set limits for yourself, and when you're in the room with your family, be in the room. Our world is constantly changing, so let's be constantly adapting our strategies to continue to help our kids thrive. Hey, thanks so much for joining us again this month. We will see you once again next month.